Do you want to improve at a quicker pace? Check out the Git Good course. Instead of just understanding concepts, you'll learn how to implement them directly into your driving. What makes it effective is the approach and practical drills. Together, we're gonna focus on breaking down those complex concepts into small digestible bits that are simple to understand. Everything from the course was tested and refined during the years in coaching sessions, so what I ended up with was the ones that I saw were the most effective. Let's elevate your racing skills together. Now for the trial guide. Before starting, if you enjoyed this channel, if you learned something, feel free to give it a like and a subscribe, it will help me so much with the YouTube algorithm. Now going into the trial guide itself, for turn 1, this is gonna be very very tricky, like turn 1, 2, 3, super easy to lose a lot of time. The first one is gonna be flat, so this one you're gonna take it flat. But for the next one, the most important thing is to carry a lot of speed while going uphill. That's the most important part. The entry here is super super important because if you're gonna brake too much, you will lose some time that's gonna be impossible to gain it back on the exit. So what I'm doing here, I'm trying to brake late and soft. So I'm using as a reference for braking this change in tarmac color. Like right now, you will see that this part of the tarmac is a lot darker in color. Slightly past it, like five meters past it, I'm applying the brakes. I'm braking initially almost in a straight line. I have like 10, 15 degrees of steering angle. So the initial touch of application of the brakes, it will be a bit more aggressive, like I'm picking 767, but notice what I'm doing. At peak pressure right now, at 67, I'm turning my steering wheel straight. So I'm going straight at this point. This is super, super important because in order to brake late, you have to brake hard. And in order to brake hard, you have to try to keep your steering wheel almost straight because otherwise the grip levels are going to be split between turning and braking. You want to be as efficient as you can uh, under braking so you have to be a bit straight at peak pressure but afterwards I drop it very quickly and I start turning and notice as I'm bleeding the brakes I'm turning more and more and more. Now after I get this apex and now we're heading towards turn 3 I believe it's super important to drop the brakes because in this part here, in this plateau right here, you just want to carry the speed so that the car will reach this curb right here. So if you find yourself not hitting this left curb, it means you have um, less speed than ideal. So ideally you want to be at this curb. That's gonna be super, super important. And right now I'm applying again the brakes whenever I'm turning into this corner. So if you will look at the brake shape, it's hard braking initially, dropping but not to zero, like dropping to 5%, then reapplying the brakes again. So we have two stages of braking for the two different corners. Brake hard, drop, then for this one, which is gonna be the exit to the next complex of corners, you have to brake again in first gear and also what's going to be important is how you're going to downshift so right now we're in fifth gear but what as we're approaching we go to third and at this point we don't go to second yet because if you will force downshifting quickly here you will lose a lot of minimum speed so we're delaying the moment that we're going to do downshifts we're going from fifth third now second and very late whenever we're turning first slightly before we're turning because if you're gonna time downshift into first gear while we have the maximum amount of rotation the car might spin anyways it's gonna be super easy to spin the car here if you're gonna carry a bit too much speed the car is gonna it, it's gonna spin what you notice also in my braking is that i'm going up and down up and down into the into the shape this is me trying to keep the car at the grip limit so i have a full lesson about how you can do this management of braking in lower three percentages in my sim racing course you can check it out in the video description but the main idea will be that you want to induce some understeer or oversteer with your brake so this is exactly what i'm doing here i'm trying to keep the neutral balance of the car in terms of apex for this last one you have to cut it a bit 
and you have to be immediately back on throttle. On the exit, use all this curb, this is gonna be important, and reposition the car almost in the middle. Don't go all the way to the right side because you will miss your turning point. If you don't miss your turning point by over preparing to the right side, your speed is too low. So your car should be almost in the center of the track and when turning into this corner I'm looking at this dirt right here near the curb. This patch right here, I'm trying to put my tire very close to it. So right now I'm hitting the curb but I'm not kinda hitting that spot. I found that spot to be the one that's gonna give you the best exit because you're gonna take it flat and the car will slide a bit. So here what's gonna be key for you to take this corner flat is to focus on your steering angle. You want to take a late apex and you want to turn less. So if you will turn very early into the corner, you will run out of track and subconsciously you will turn your steering wheel more. Because you will add more steering angle, the TC is gonna kick in and you will uh, slow down a lot or you will spin. Instead, you want to turn a bit later into the corner. Remember, an early apex is gonna give you a late uh, an early apex is going to give you a wide exit, so you need a late apex here so that you will have enough space on the exit without using a lot of steering angle just because the car doesn't have enough grip. But if you will focus as a reference in this dirt right here, and try to put your left tire on it, I think you will do just fine. Using all this, all this curb and immediately putting back to the left because you can take an off track if you go forward just a bit more. Next corner, reference for braking is this beginning of the curve right here, the white part. I'm braking, down shifting to third instantly and I'm apexing around this curve. I want to cut this curve right here and whenever I'm touching the curve, I'm putting the power down. Notice that I'm not able to go 0-100 very quickly. I felt like the car is gonna spin, but I think my apex was a bit too early. So, what you can do instead to make it even better than this is instead of braking like I'm braking right now, notice that I'm peaking and I'm dropping quickly, you can brake softer but hold it for longer. You will have the same speed but you will apex just few meters later and that later apex is gonna give you a straight throttle application because ideally what you want to see here is you going from 0 to 100% half uh, twice as, as fast as what I'm doing here. So what I'm doing here is half of what it should have been. Ideally, this line on throttle, instead of going like this, it should have arrived around here to 100%. So keep that in mind, you want to be a lot quicker on throttle and you can achieve it by breaking it softer but hold it for longer. Notice that the car will feel a lot more oversteery when you're gonna do that, so you have to balance the car and to induce some understeer. Now putting the, car, putting the car all the way to this curve right here, the braking point is gonna be super, super different, super, super difficult. So to nail this braking is you have to brake earlier than you think, basically. Because you don't have enough time to straighten up the car. Notice that I'm braking while I'm still turning here. Not ideal, but you can't do it otherwise. Unless you, you choose a different line, but I could not be able to find a better line than this. So for my line, for this line, you have to brake while you turn. And um, what you can use like a reference for braking, what I'm using is this end of this curve right here on the left side. You see the white one right here? When I'm passing it, it's just a few moments that is now blocked from the pillar and now I'm applying the brakes. It's not a perfect braking point and all the time it's gonna be a bit different. But roughly this is what I'm doing and I'm adjusting the pressures. Look, I'm going up and down, up and down. Um, so that I can keep the car at the grip limit, but also because my braking is not so precise. So this is one of, for me, one of the most difficult corners of the track. Super inconsistent, um, but some guidelines. Um, braking point, while um, braking point after this white cone can make it a bit more consistent. Now, knowing that you're gonna brake and turn at the same time, it means you have to brake soft. You're gonna brake very, very hard then the car will lose grip, you, it won't turn and brake at the same time. The third one is to touch the white line or the beginning of this curb on the right tires. Don't go over it because that curb is a 3D curb and it's bumpy. So the, the tire will go up and down, up and down and because of that uh, you will lose grip each time the, uh, the car will bounce on the curb basically. 
so you don't want to use it while braking you might use it a bit when turning into the corner now going into the corner here you want to take this curve you want to put a throttle and barely kiss this curve but take it late as i'm doing here it's a lot harder to explain it you have to to feel it because if you're gonna take it a bit too early then the car will slide if you're gonna not take it at all then you will arrive very wide here so don't touch this green curve right here you can touch just this white and red and even when you're doing that you will feel like the car is gonna lose grip so i'm doing here a lift a small lift just because i touch it and then i'm getting back on one thing that i'm doing though in this corner i'm upshifting to third gear a lot sooner so um because i feel like the rear is so slidey i'm giving it third gear so that i can manage the slip angle without losing a bit of time so i think upshifting to third a bit earlier is one of the good things that you can do on this exit because it's very sketchy around here you want to push the car all the way and use this curb now while braking it's important to brake with the left tires on the green and with the right tires on the tarmac don't brake with the right tires on this uh, curb because it's the same thing you will lose grip and it's probably going to be an off track so you have to make sure that while braking you're not braking on this curb into this corner now in terms of braking point as a reference now this is mostly done on feel but what i'm using and it's something that i overemphasize in my course is to use in in this instances in which you need some very precise very quick reactions like right now to use something else than visual references because it's going to be very hard to find a visual reference so what i'm using is the moment that i straighten up the wheel like right now my wheel is straight and i'm applying the brakes so this is my reference for braking i plan to arrive at this curb and while turning, I wait until the steering wheel is straight and then I'm pushing the brakes and I'm looking at this curve. I want to go very close to the yellow sausage curb and the moment that I'm at it to push the throttle, this is going to be key. Here is going to be very easy to take the off track. So if you're going to put your left tires a bit more towards the left side, you will get the off track. It's very sensitive. I think the off-track limit is actually having the right tires on the white line, so if you use the curb too much, you'll get the off-track. Definitely use this curb, because you will save a lot of time, bring the car back very quickly, and for the next corner, my reference for braking, I'm looking at the 100, but my actual reference is this block box right here. I don't know if it's visible, the quality is a bit bad, but in between 100 and 50, I believe this is 75, this, this block right here the black box i'm breaking at it and i would say that you should break just a bit earlier than that a bit earlier than this black box because i'm shooting this corner and i'm missing it a bit like whenever here i can't go on throttle as confidence so notice that i have to give it this blimp then a bit of brakes and then throttle so not ideal ideally whenever you are at this point you want to go on throttle but in terms of the line you want to use this part right here with the curb and with the green this is gonna make your car slide whenever you go on the top of that curb the car will slide a bit but that's actually good for us because it will give us a bit of rotation to take this one flat like this i'm doing like a small lift like four percent see it was 96 99 so very small lift just to make sure i'm on the right side while breaking for the next corner but hitting that curb and coming from the all the way to the outside to the inside is going to give you extra rotation to use in this corner breaking point here will be before the white here so before the curves begin like around here i'm applying the brakes break in a straight line initially brake hard and while downshifting to first bleed off the brakes touch this part of the curb and immediately put the power down so you can use all this track this is going to be important the tc will kick in a bit but i found that it's still faster to to have it like that now for this corner right here i'm braking after the beginning of the curb i'm staying in second gear touching a bit this curb and using all the way this exit you can get away with using all the way without getting the off track you have to be very quick on throttle same for this one here i'm braking more or less in the middle of the curb in first gear apexing around the sausage curb without touching it putting the throttle back and again you see this sector of these four corners that we just discussed are very very similar the only thing that you have to know is the gearing but in terms of the approach the apex 
the way that you go on throttle on the exit, they're the same. So it's more of the same. So I found these corners, whenever you take one right, everyone, everything falls into place because you will apply the same techniques in the others. Now for this one, I'm using a bit this part to open up the corner. I'm not sure if it's needed, but maybe, maybe it just helps by turning the steering wheel just a bit less. So you can experiment with it. Apexing around the dirt around here, super important to cut it a bit. So you will be more on the left. And while braking here, you will notice that you will brake diagonally towards the left and then turn right. Just because this is the only thing that's going to work unless you have to lift in the previous corner, which is not worth it. You will go diagonally all the way to this curb and then turn for the next corner. In terms of braking point, beginning of the curb is going to be the braking point. In first gear, touching a bit this part of the curb, so you can go a bit on top of it, but don't go on the yellow anti-curbs, because then the car will bounce a bit. Super important to go on throttle early in first gear, because you will go uphill, so you need that torque and it's a big straight afterwards. Using all the track, having just a moment here, but in short, that's a track guide for this week. I hope you have a great week ahead. I hope you will do amazing and you will have some good races. If you want to progress, if you want to accelerate your learning, you can check out the course. If you need coaching, I'm also doing coaching. It's a bit tougher because my schedule is so full, but uh, you can check out the website and you can find some slots in which I'll be available. But in short, that's it. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.